But I do have to challenge you on one thing, which is this recent um, tactic, if you want to call it that, of Reform UK of so vetting their candidates via media, as Richard Tice put it. This this thing whereby Hope Not Hate put out all these hit pieces and then Reform responded by actually dropping candidates and things like this. And I wanted to question that as a tactic because it seems to me you're basically rewarding your enem enemies, essentially, and punishing your friends, which is the opposite of what you want to do if you're serious about political power. What do you think to that? Well, I mean, I think Rich the reason Richard dropped the candidates was because he looked at what Hope Not Hate had discovered in the instances of those candidates and agreed that actually what they'd said wasn't was less than ideal, I think is the best way to describe it. But, um, you know, when you're an insurgent, when you're a, a political party, it's difficult making sure um, that, you know, people with whom you're not entirely ideologically aligned, um, you know, preventing them getting into the party and undermining your thesis. And we see that in spades with the Tory party, which is an extremely mature party with massive, you know, vetting systems in place, etc. Um, look at the series of resignations that we've had in MPs as a result of misdemeanors. But these people weren't sitting in the House of Parliament. They didn't make it that far. We're an insurgent party. Our resources are much more limited. And undoubtedly, we will have candidates and we'll have members who say daft things with which we do not agree and which are not the party line and which from whom we will therefore have to distance ourselves. Um, so I don't see Richard as rewarding hope, not hate. This was Richard taking note of what had been discovered and, and acting on it. The Daily Mail similarly tried to rubbish some of our candidates. The Daily Mail famously regards itself as centre-right, but it's really just a mouthpiece, as far as I can see, for the Conservative Party. And as you get closer to the general election, you'll see, I think, them ramping up their attacks on Reform UK. Uh, they did it in 2019, and they've started again, and they had some revelations, as they call it, of some of, about some of our candidates. And Richard looked at those and defended the candidates in, 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 that, in that case because he didn't agree that the Daily Mail's points were, were valid. Yeah, was it the Mail on Sunday? Or? Uh, mail on Sunday, yeah. not the Daily Mail. Yeah, mail yeah. on Sunday. I, yeah. always, I made that distinction because Peter yeah. Hitchens always makes it. Mail on Sunday, a different paper. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, I noticed he defended them in that case. I thought maybe he would learned that you couldn't just keep getting rid of all your candidates. Or was it, maybe it was a case-by-case -case basis. I don't know. But I, I take your point. My concern is that, you know, Hope Not Hate is an activist organisation one of them is a former National Front organiser. They seem to be now extreme leftists. They've tried to get friends of mine sacked. They are completely bad actors. You know, they now gloat about getting rid of reform candidates online. They say they're going to call reform far right no matter what happens. So these are not good faith actors. So, yes, I, I, I sort of take the point. But, but at the same time, the optics of it just seem, and they seem to many of my friends and people who, who may have voted for reform, just as if you have essentially rewarded hope, not hate, even if that's not the intention, because you can just ignore these people and it goes away would be another approach. That is an approach. But if a candidate has said something with which we as a party disagree and, you know, it goes with our core kind of values, then you, you do have to take action. And I, by the way, Richard is not thin skinned. I think the it would be a thin skinned person that would react to hope, not hate. What's the name of the chap from hope, not hate? The sort of attack dog. Nick Lowell's something what's his name uh, nick lowell's joe it? something jo oh, okay. jolly and something more oh, jolly and more yeah is he hope not hate i'm or? not sure he's he, that lawyer he, he doesn't like foxes but i'm not yeah totally i thought he, sure. yeah he doesn't like foxes <laughs> anyway i was on with him the other day on a radio program and um he repeatedly said that reform uk is far right and i extreme far right and i and i asked him to explain and he said it's because you want to leave the european convention of human rights and so that would suggest that anyone that's not a member of the European Convention, of far, uh, far right, <laughs> the European Convention of Human Rights, is um, is somehow far right. Well, that would include you know the vast majority of the world, and that's just not the case. So there are lunatics out there like him, and we won't pay any heed to pointless, irrelevant attacks on the, on on the party. But if valid points are made, then I think it would be wrong not to react to them. Okay. So I see it a little bit like apologizing, you know, apologizing in a Christian society was known as a good thing. It implies repentance, which demands forgiveness. But in this woke culture, which subverts all our previous moral norms, you know, apologizing becomes a bad thing because it just becomes. Did Richard blood apologize? In the water. I'm just using it as an analogy yeah. for 
it, what seems to be a capitulation to hope not hate. You know, it might be the yeah. decent thing, but that doesn't seem to really work in 2024 in the yeah. culture. I don't, I don't think we did it in order to be decent to hope not hate or to apologize to anyone. I think we did it because what we found out about the candidates was not consistent with what we would wish to be putting out as a party. And we are very thick skinned, by the way. There is no way that we're going to bend our course because some group of people, some uh, detractors have a go at us either personally or ideologically. We, we, you know, we've examined ourselves. We know what we believe in. We have a formed ideology. We have a foundation for that ideology. We ha pretty much know the answer to any policy question because we have a rock solid ideology, unlike the Conservative Party and the Labour Party, who will say anything that needs to be said in order to gain favor with the electorate for ever, however temporary that period in order to get elected. You know, we're not that party. We are not that way. We are we have a set of defined beliefs which hang off a, a, a foundation, as I say, of, you know, bedrock, which forms our ideology and we won't deviate.